Hey guys, Twisted Mexi here. Today I've got a tips and tricks video for Tool. Um, I wanted to kind of go over some things that have been added since the Tool tutorial was done and uh, also take a moment to recap some things that I think were kind of glossed over during the tutorial. Um, if you haven't seen the actual tutorial video yet, I do heavily recommend watching that first. Um, I'll put a link to that in the top right. So one of the things I've changed since then is if you look in the tutorial video, um, the dialog boxes for Tool are kind of in the way. They're stuck in the middle. Um, you can actually move your camera around while it's there, but it's really annoying to have that dialog box right in the middle of the screen. So what I've done since then is I have changed it so that if you go to do a Tool command, it shows up at the top by default. Um, some people do prefer to have it in the middle, or they might have a different preference from what I've selected as default. So what I've done is I've also made it a configuration option. So if we shift click the ground and go to tool options, you can go to change settings and set dialog position. Um, so if we open that up, you'll see that there's several options you can pick from. Uh, the reason these were picked is because they're the locations that don't really interfere with any other UI elements. So if we wanted the old school dialog, we could just click center and you'll see it snaps down here. Or if we wanted it to the left, we can click that. And um, top left would put it in this corner here. So I do prefer to have it in the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that back to default and then hit okay. And uh, so that just kind of gives you some freedom to change how Tool looks. Like maybe if you would prefer to have it as much out of the way as possible, you can do so. Um, or if you just prefer to have it pop up over top of the object, that's fine too. The other major feature that I've added since the tutorial video was done that I really wish was in the tutorial um, is the fact that Tool can now clone objects for you. The main advantage to that is the fact that um, if you try to clone something in build by, it will actually reset the rotation um, and also the scale. But if you clone it with tool, it'll actually keep the settings you've applied with tool. So the other major advantage that affords us is that normally if you clone an object that's debug, uh, build by will tell you that it can't do it, um, but tool can actually do it. So we'll just place a couple of debug objects, go to live mode, and I'm gonna click on this to activate it. Uh, I'll click these to add to group. Again, if you're unfamiliar with these controls, I do recommend watching the tutorial video. Um, and then to clone, what we're gonna do is we're going to press shift and alt, and then click on the floor. So you can see that actually cloned uh, the objects as they are to the new position that you clicked. Um, let's say we wanted to clone a bunch of objects in the same spot, like if we were rotating a bunch of wood planks to make a circular pattern, what you can do is actually uh, alt click the, or sorry, alt shift click the object and that will clone the objects in the exact same position. Uh, one thing that can be useful for this is if you uh, have a bunch of objects that you use frequently. You can just kind of go over to the corner of the lot and um, place a bunch of them. So just grab one of each. Just anything that you might be using frequently. And then you can keep those there as kind of a sort of palette. So every time that you need, um, you know, one of these bottles, you just toggle it active and then Alt Shift click it and then you can drag it to wherever you want or you can just go into build by and grab it and move it yourself so that way you can kind of build your palette at the start and not have to go digging through debug every time you want to find it one thing i recommend is that if you're going to be cloning uh, pattern of objects like uh, let's say we want a bunch of these boxes um, i do recommend that you do it exponentially so what I mean by that is instead of cloning two at a time, we're going to toggle this active, add this to the group, and we will clone two this time. 
by alt shift clicking and then we'll alt click to nudge those into place and once they look good we're going to alt click the original two and we're going to clone again and you'll see this time it cloned four instead of two so we're going to move those into position again using alt click on the ground and then we'll add the original four back to the group and we're going to clone one last time and nudge those into place and we'll call that good and click a couple times to turn that off and there you go in a matter of seconds we've turned two boxes into 16 and that's going to be quite a bit faster than trying to do two at a time and you know adjust each set uh, exactly how you want it so those are the clone tools one thing that was actually covered in the tutorial, but I feel like a lot of people are missing it, is that there's one setting in tool options that controls how almost every function in tool behaves. Um, and that's called Snap to Terrain. It's on by default. And the main reason it's there is uh, so that if you use tool to move an object, and let's say this ground was higher over here, it will actually elevate the object to the new ground height. Um, which is great whenever you're moving stuff off lot and you don't have to keep guessing what elevation that floor is at. Um, but since a lot of people use tool on the lot, it can kind of uh, get frustrating if, let's say, uh, I'm just going to grab a toilet and I'm going to place it on the wall real quick. Okay, so we'll tool that up. Click the wall. So let's say that I wanted that toilet on the wall, but I don't want it halfway through the wall. Um, when snap to terrain is on and I go to nudge it out with tool, that's alt clicking the surface, by the way. Um, you can see that every time I click, it's pulling it down toward the floor as well. So that can get really frustrating if you want it at a certain height and it just keeps going back down every time you click, because then you're going to have to keep going back in and elevating it with tools commands. And that's really the long way of doing things and it's going to be really frustrating and uh, I wouldn't even blame you if you quit using tool because of it. Uh, so it's really important that you know this options here because what's going to happen now is we're going to go into tool options, change settings, and turn off snap to terrain and we'll just click back at the height we wanted. Okay, that worked but again we're stuck in the wall. So what we're going to do is we're going to alt click the floor again and nudge it out. But you can see that because Snap to Terrain is off, uh, it's actually not pulling it down toward the ground. It's just kind of keeping it at the elevation we had. Um, so that's actually going to make it a lot easier for you to elevate objects and position them exactly how you want. And that actually brings me to the next tip for tool as well. Um, so with Snap to Terrain turned off, what you can do is let's say we had an object that we wanted set to a certain height. In this case, we're going to put a toilet on a coffee table. I don't know why you'd do that, but if that's your thing, I'm not gonna shame you for it. So what we're gonna do is, normally we would go to tool elevate and kind of guess the number, but the quicker way is to tool toggle active object, and then all you have to do is click the wall right behind the coffee table and the height is now set perfectly, and all you have to do is alt-click to gravity pull the object out toward the table. So we'll call that good, and then we'll click once to deactivate it. And uh, there you go. There's your elevated toilet. Uh, something I actually just found out while filming this video is that if you had a bunch of objects that you wanted rotated and uh, they normally slot to a table. Instead of rotating each object on its own, what you can do is you can go in the tool and rotate the tables to whatever degree you want. Um, so I've got 15, 30, 45, 90, 90 on a different axis, and then a combination of the two. Um, so you can rotate those with tool, and with move objects on, go back in the build by. And whatever objects you want to place that normally slot to a table, you can just grab it 
Now let's say you want it at 15 degrees, you drag it to the 15 degree table. And then once you drag it off, it's actually going to keep that rotation for you. Um, so you can do that repeatedly if you wanted it at 45, drag it there, and then 90, no problem. Um, it even works on the two different axes. So that is a new one to me. Uh, I hope you find it as useful as I do. <laughs> and it's really a testament to the fact that you'll never stop learning tool. Um, just the more you use it, the more you'll discover things you can do that will kind of make life easier for you and, um, you know, unlock new possibilities. So one thing I've noticed about rotation with Tool is that if there's a visible face to an object and you're rotating on that axis, meaning this one, um, then you can usually infer that it's going to be a positive number to bring the top toward you. So if you watch, I'll put in positive 10, and the top of the TV is now coming toward me. Um, if I did negative, it would actually go away. So we'll just do negative 20 to show that. Uh, so at least whenever you're lo looking from that direction, you can tell which number you should put in, positive or negative. Uh, it might save you a little bit of time trying to adjust. So one thing that uh, builders use pretty often is this trick where they take two existing objects and overlap them to create like a new pseudo object. Um, the side effect of that is that for a lot of them, it creates this flickering overlap area. And uh, so even if you don't want to learn anything else about tool, one thing that's really handy about it and it's really easy to use is that you can pick one of these objects that's flickering and just shift click it, go to tool, and you'll click elevate, type in 0 0.001, and that's a, that's a minuscule amount. But it's enough to tell the game that that surface should show over top of this one. And so there's no flickering, um, and Sims can still use the object fine because it's uh, close enough to the original level that they don't notice a difference. So that's just a very, very tiny feature that can really improve the quality of your builds if you're trying to do things like this. Another neat trick that Tool can do is that you can actually rotate rugs and put them on the wall as tapestries. Um, you do want to make sure it's up against a wall though, and the reason for that is that uh, rugs do this weird thing where objects render through them. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain, so I'll just show you real quick. So I'm going to elevate it by 2, and then we're going to rotate 90 degrees. And even though it's physically in front of the Sims and the desk, you can see that if I put the camera between them, uh, the Sims render in front of the rug. I'm assuming that's to prevent flickering from like when an object's sitting on top of the rug. So do make sure that it's up against a wall. Um, to do that, I'm just going to hit toggle active and bring that wall up. And we're going to click the wall once. And there you go. You can see that we now have a tapestry on the wall. And uh, I'll just shift click it and hit toggle active. And all good. One thing a lot of people may not realize about tool is that the scale option can actually be used to hide objects. So uh, a trick that I learned from the community recently is that we can take a desk, place it here, and then we can take an end table, so just save this one, place it under there. Again, you'll need uh, move objects on for this. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and grab a uh, computer and a chair. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to live mode and shift click the end table, scale. Uh, this number will probably vary depending on what end table you use, but uh, I believe 1.08 will do the trick here. So that's going to bring the end table up to the desk surface. And once we've got that, what we can do is we can shift click the table and go to scale. 
and we're going to put in 0 0.0001. And that number is actually so small that the object just disappears. Um, do be careful with that. Make sure the object's where you want it before you shrink it down that small. Uh, because it's not impossible to get back, but it's kind of difficult. So we can actually um, use everything the way we normally would. You can see that if I ask the sim to come over oh, here and play oh. a game, uh, she'll do so. Because technically that desk is still there and everything is slotted properly. It's just visually the end table is now the desk. So that's a neat little trick that I picked up from Twitter. Um, so again, there's just a million different things that you can do with Tool, and uh, I don't think the community will ever stop finding new ways to use it, which uh, I'm really happy about. Let's say, though, that you didn't listen to me, and uh, now you've got an invisible object that you <laughs> really need to get back. Uh, so you can't select that object directly, obviously. What you can do is you can go to Tool Options and set a grouping box and then you come over here to the opposite corner and set another grouping box and as you can see it's kind of built a square around that area um, so we'll go ahead and hit shift tool options toggle group and you do need another object in that group to click on uh, what we're going to do is we're going to shift click that object go to tool scale and we're going to set it back to one. And that's how you get an invisible object back. Because it's still technically within those bounds, so it becomes active. You just need another object to act as your uh, target. This next trick is only useful if you have a floor that's not going to be used below. Uh, for example, if you have a house without a basement. Um, what you can do is, let's say that you wanted to have a coffee machine on something other than a countertop. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and grab a countertop. We'll just grab that one. And then we're going to grab a coffee machine. Place it there. And we could just go in here, grab whatever table we want. We'll just save this one. Um, but if we placed it here, the sim would not be able to reach the coffee machine because the table would actually block the way. Uh, so the trick is that we go down here and I've already created a basement and what we're going to do is we're going to go to live mode and lift it up by three. Uh, three will always be the perfect height as long as the basement is at the default wall height and that gets it up to the next level. So now all we have to do is go to tool scale and we're going to do that same trick that we did with the desk where we just set it to a really small number and then it's not an issue anymore so just to prove that we can reach the coffee pot we'll have our sim come over and brew some coffee and you can see that's no problem for her so yeah that's a uh, custom countertop so in my original tutorial if you watch to the end you probably saw the mini tutorial on replacing apartment windows but I did say how that would only work on lots that were parallel to the world axis. Uh, for example, this lot is diagonal to the world axis. And so the move grid does not line up with the walls. And that can be a real pain if you're trying to use that uh, mini tutorial for replacing the windows. So I've actually got a better method for the lots like these. Um, so I'll just go ahead and show you real quick. We're still going to grab the windows the way we have been and uh, once they're out of the way we'll go in here and delete them and we're going to grab a new window or sorry we're going to place a wall first right there and we're going to grab a window let's see that one works and instead of doing the grid move what we're going to do is shift click it, tool toggle active, and we're going to just kind of click on the center of this wall right here. Uh, let's see, right there. And then all we have to do is uh, de elevate it by three. 
so negative three. And then there you go, custom window, uh, no grid necessary. And uh, I think it's pretty quick to be honest. All right, that's all the tips and tricks for now. Again, I'm always learning new tricks myself. So if you've discovered something you found helpful, please do hit me up on Twitter and let me know. If you've watched this to the end, surprise, you're among the first people to know that my organized debug mod that you've seen throughout this video is finally releasing for patron early access tomorrow. I'm actually renaming that mod to Better Build By, and if there's no issues found during the early access period, it will be publicly available about a week later. As always, you can grab the latest versions of all my mods using twistedmexi.com, and if you find my mods helpful or would like to support me, please consider joining me at Patreon. Thanks to all my current patrons, I truly do appreciate all of you, and your support makes content like this possible. Thanks everyone, and I hope you have a good day.